Gracious God, let this candle be a sign that we have asked you to dance and burn and shine in us. Amen. Good morning, St. Mark's community. Good morning, pandemic church shoppers. Are there any of you out there? If so, welcome. I'm Connie Bowman, and I've been an intern here for the past several months, and this is my last day of school. It seems like yesterday when I walked up to the table and was greeted so warmly by Sally and Tim, we were worshiping outdoors then under the big, beautiful oak tree. And as I looked at how many of you showed up to worship, all masked up, lugging your lawn chairs and your coffee to go, I will never forget how holy it felt to be there, even with the bikes and motorcycles whizzing by on 216. I met so many of you that day and wondered how I would ever get to know your names and match them with the top halves of your faces. It was so nice to see familiar faces. June from tennis, Pam and Bill from college, Ron from EFM. I just recall feeling so welcomed, but a little nervous, like it was the first day of school. I was grateful for Kathy Boyer, who reminded me that when you're the lector and wearing a mask and reading glasses, your glasses will fog up. She was right. All you can see is the beginning and ends of sentences. Good times. Sandy took me under her wing and taught me how to properly fold and put away sacred things. I learned so much from Father Taylor, so thank you. Thank you all for welcoming me so graciously into this amazing community. In Mark's Gospel, Jesus is modeling for us healthy community. Jesus and the gang arrive at Simon Peter's house to find his mother-in-law sick in bed with a fever. Now, she's really sick. We don't catch her name, so let's just call her Dolores. Jesus sees an immediate need, and despite it being the Sabbath, he takes Dolores' hand, raises her up, and heals her. Dolores, feeling better, begins to serve Jesus and the disciples. Now, the Greek translation of the verb to serve, diakonos, where we get the word deacon, also means to minister, to serve. It's the same service we're all called into at our baptism. Sure, maybe Dolores put out some yummy appetizers. That's just basic hospitality. But upon her restoration to wholeness, she was called into community to serve. In healthy community, if someone isn't thriving, we address it. I've witnessed this here at St. Mark's. You guys genuinely care and look after one another. Next in Mark's Gospel, we see Jesus healing and casting out demons in the wider community, working outward in sort of concentric circles. That happened with the Dream Builders Desk Project, right? First, they went to students here in Howard County, and then quickly they'd spread far and wide, thanks be to God, and Good Morning America. Jesus then slips away from the crowd. The disciples find him praying. He's discerned their next steps. They must go out, proclaim the message of the kingdom, create even bigger circles. Jesus is becoming more widely known. And fame can be positive for sharing the good news of God's kingdom. But fame always has a shadow side. What do you say we play a little Jeopardy? This is Jeopardy. Here are today's contestants. The Congregation of St. Mark's Highland, a charming little Episcopal church in picturesque Howard County, Maryland. The category is Famous Quotes by Women in U.S. History. And here's your clue. She was famous for saying, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. It 
If you said, who is Fannie Lou Hamer? Congratulations, St. Mark's. You win the Daily Double. How did you do? Have you not heard of her? Allow me to shine a little light. Fannie Lou Hamer was a powerful voice in the American Civil Rights Movement. Born in 1917 in Montgomery County, Mississippi, she was the 20th child of poor sharecroppers. She worked the fields probably as soon as she could walk and endured the horrors of crushing racism in the segregated South. Fannie Lou Hamer had a magnetic personality. When she spoke, she delivered powerful sermons about freedom and justice that would bring people to tears. And then, in her deep, resonant voice, she would belt, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. It was said that Hamer chose that song because it summarized her life and because every little light can make a difference. In the summer of 1962, Hamer became active with voter registration efforts. As her fame grew, this five foot four inch woman was threatened, arrested, beaten, and shot at. In 1964, Hamer brought the civil rights struggle to the attention of the nation during a televised session of the Democratic National Convention. She spoke of being tortured and beaten just for trying to register to vote. She was later praised by Martin Luther King, resulting in the convention voting against any future racially segregated delegations. Hamer served tirelessly to provide childcare, family services, and to increase business opportunities for minorities. In 1977, she died young at age 59. The quote about being sick and tired of being sick and tired is engraved on her gravestone. It must have been exhausting to be Fannie Lou Hamer. But as the prophet Isaiah preaches, God does not faint or grow weary. God's always in our story. Montgomery County, Mississippi was a far cry from Montgomery County, Maryland, where journalist Kay Mills was raised. She went to Bethesda Chevy Chase High School, Penn State, we are, and got her master's in African history from Northwestern. She wrote for the Baltimore Sun and the Los Angeles Times and was a Stanford teaching fellow. Impressive credentials. But let me tell you who impressed Kay Mills. Kay Mills was blown away by Fannie Lou Hamer. She was impressed with her courage and charisma and her impassioned testimony at the Democratic National Convention. The two women finally met in the early 1970s, struck up a friendship, and decided to collaborate on Hamer's biography. No publisher at that time would commit, so the project had to be shelved. But in 1988, after hearing civil rights leader Jesse Jackson publicly praise Hamer, Mills, still convinced that Fannie Lou Hamer's story needed to be told, tried again. Kay Mills got her book published. Guess what the title was? This Little Light of Mine, The Life of Fannie Lou Hamer. It was released in 1993. It was a long time in the making. It took 20 years, but finally Mills was able to bring Hamer's story to wider circles and to shine a light on the demon racism. After its publication, more books about Fannie Lou Hamer were written. Important stories need to be told and retold. Today's story from Mark is retold again in both Matthew and Luke. Heal, cast out demons, spread the message. This gospel is being lived out in Nashville, Tennessee, a couple of years ago, I sat with Episcopal priest Becca Stevens in the bustling Thistle Stop Cafe on Charlotte Avenue in West Nashville. I ordered their organic mixed green salad with beets, pears, cranberries, almonds, and goat cheese. It was topped with perfectly seared grilled salmon. 
It had this amazing vinaigrette. I sipped a steaming hot mug of their custom tea blend as Becca shared her story. I'll spare you the details, which are pretty unpalatable, but what I will say is that the trauma she survived as a child happened in an unhealthy church community. As part of her healing, Becca was inspired to help women who had been abused, trafficked, and addicted. One woman, let's just call her Dolores, she served me my tea. She was nobody's mother-in-law. After years living on the streets, the community at Thistle Farms encircled her. She was given a place to live, heal, and work. They raised her up. And now she serves, too, with the biggest, warmest smile you've ever seen. Like your desk project, Thistle Farms has generated some good PR. They're doing a great job of spreading the message that love heals. So are you, St. Mark's. You know that in healthy community, all can flourish. In this time when we are discerning what is really important, what is dispensable, and what is absolutely necessary to our flourishing, it's clear, especially after my time here, that a healthy, loving community is highest on that list, one that puts compassion first, embraces a stranger, that looks for ways to serve God in the greater community. Are you blushing yet? Because I got more. Austin, can you zoom in just a little bit? Not too much, just a little. It's okay, I'm his mother-in-law. Pandemic church shoppers, be forewarned. If you choose St. Mark's Highland as your spiritual home, you will be asked to serve. But you'll also be generously fed. Thank you, St. Mark's, for the warm welcome, for your gracious time and generosity, allowing me the freedom to explore my better late than never kind of call. This community has left a holy, indelible mark on my heart. Amen.